Deserts have long been symbols of death and barrenness. Yet right in China, people are harvesting shrimp and fish, raising seafood in the heart of the sands, and even growing plants that typically require lots of water. It sounds almost unbelievable, but this is the reality unfolding in Xinjiang, China, a place the world once called the Dead Sea of Central Asia. Thanks to bold technological advances and a massive ecological industrial system in just a few years, this region has been hailed as an artificial ocean in the middle of a vast desert. Is this really true? And how did they do it? To find the answer, we need to return to the harsh heart of the Taklamakan Desert. Taklamakan, a name that means once you enter, you can't get out in Uyghur, stretches over 337,000 square kilometers, almost the size of Texas. It's the second largest sand desert in the world and true to its name. It's so dry and unforgiving that no one wants to cross it, let alone live there. Daytime temperatures can soar above 122 degrees Fahrenheit, drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit at night. And some areas get less than four inches of rain per year with some places going decades without a single drop. The land here is just as harsh, salty, alkaline, brittle, and infertile. Simply put, you wouldn't expect any typical crop to grow there. For many years, this area was abandoned. Everyone saw it as hopeless. To be honest, we thought the same. It was a degraded land too dry and too far from any major farming region. At the same time, China was under pressure to solve big problems. Food security for 1.4 billion people, rural economic stability, and controlling desertification. Scientists made an unprecedented decision release millions of fish into artificial ponds in the driest land and wait one year to see what would happen. This experiment stunned the world. It wasn't the Great Wall or the world's tallest bridges. This time, China grabbed attention with an ecological project that challenged the very limits of nature. But the experiment offered a glimmer of hope. When geological surveys found layers of salty alkaline groundwater beneath Xinjiang's burning sands with salinity levels close to seawater, combined with meltwater from the Tian Shan Mountains, they could create a mini ocean right in the desert. Seizing this discovery, the first water tanks were built and the first batch of fish fry was released an experiment never before attempted in human history. In 2023, China officially launched seafood farming experiments at several sites around the Takla Makan, especially in Korla Houghton and Turpin in Xinjiang. These aren't just random ponds, they're closed loop recirculating aquaculture systems built on salty alkaline land where nothing could grow. The ponds range from 3,000 to over 10,000 square meters, some as big as a stadium lined with waterproof membranes and equipped with water pumps, oxygenators, mechanical and biological filters, and smart sensors to monitor temperature salinity and dissolved oxygen. In the first phase, scientists released around 100,000 juvenile fish groupers, flounders, golden pomfrets, mullets, along with blue crabs, white leg shrimp, and some pearl oysters. What shocked both scientists and the world was the incredibly high survival rate, 99%. That's right, while many coastal aquaculture farms see survival rates of only 60 to 80%, even in leading countries like Norway. In just four months, the fish grew from three centimeters to eight to nine centimeters ready for the domestic market. At the same time, a pearl oyster farming project was launched in 2022. By 2023, about 2 million marine oysters had been released into artificial ponds. Thanks to the large temperature swings between day and night and intense sunlight pearls grown in Xinjiang are said to have a unique luster and thickness, promising to become a luxury product by 2025. The financial resources needed to operate these large-scale high-tech aquaculture systems are also significant. According to the FISH site, these systems have attracted more than $5 billion in investment over the past decade, including $1.6 billion in just the last two years. In China, the leading aquafeed company Tongwei has committed $164 million to a shrimp farming plant in Shandong province. This experiment sounds easy and smooth, right? But behind this achievement is a carefully calculated scientific formula. First, as mentioned beneath Xinjiang's scorching sands, geologists found salty, alkaline groundwater with a composition similar to natural seawater rich in salt and minerals. Normally, this water would be considered useless, but to scientists, it's raw material. It's filtered enriched with calcium, magnesium, and potassium, 
then diluted with meltwater from the Tian Shan Mountains. The result is an artificial seawater safe for fish to grow. Next is keeping the water alive. The desert fish ponds are lined with shiny black waterproof membranes covered with sand. Pumps and pipes run day and night bringing water into the ponds. Oxygenators blow clusters of white bubbles, while mechanical and biological filters process fish waste and leftover feed. Everything is monitored by smart sensors, tracking temperature, salinity, and pH every minute. Thanks to this, even when it's 122 degrees Fahrenheit outside or below freezing, the pond water stays at a stable 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit ideal for marine fish. Farmers also rely on weather forecasts and sandstorm warnings to pick the right time to release fish, since one sudden cold snap could wipe out an entire batch. Fish feed doesn't just come from automatic feeders, it also comes from over 500 species of microorganisms that naturally develop in the ponds. They provide extra nutrition, keeping the fish healthy and reducing dependence on industrial feed. Meanwhile, Boston Lake, China's largest freshwater lake has become an ecological support base. Since 2018, more than 807 million cubic meters of water from the Kaidu River have been diverted into the lake, greatly improving water quality. Around the lake are 40,000 hectares, about 99,000 acres of reeds, acting as a giant biological filter, cleaning the water and providing shelter for nearly 200 species of wild birds. In just a few years, these artificial fish ponds in the Taklamakan have proven to be more than just a scientific experiment. They're a massive economic engine. In 2023, Xinjiang's seafood output reached 184,000 tons, bringing in about $530 million in revenue. By 2024, this number rose to 196,500 tons, making Xinjiang the leader in northwestern China. If growth continues, experts predict this desert seafood market could hit $3 billion by 2025. Seafood raised in the Xinjiang desert isn't just for domestic consumption, you can find it all over the world. Thanks to a modern cold chain system, shrimp grouper and flounder from Taklamakan are sold in major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and even appear on dinner tables in Russia, Spain, Singapore, Malaysia, and many European countries. A vivid example comes from Guo Junwei, manager at Xinjiang Benteng Biotechnology. Each kilogram of tiger shrimp we sell fetches about 200 wen, around $28. Thanks to this, local incomes and living standards have clearly improved. Not only does this bring economic benefits, but the fish farming projects have also boosted the entire local ecosystem. Boston Lake, now the largest fish production base in Xinjiang, supplies over 4,000 tons of grass carp, freshwater shrimp and crab each year. The landscape around the lake has been revived. Reeds grow green, wild birds return to nest, and the water keeps getting cleaner a testament that economy and ecology can go hand in hand. The Chinese government has poured hundreds of millions of yuan into this project through direct subsidies, research funds, and land reform programs to encourage farmers and businesses to join in. In other words, every water tank built in the Teklamakan isn't just a biological experiment, it's part of a long-term economic and food security plan. More importantly, this project fits perfectly with Beijing's dual circulation strategy strengthening self-sufficiency while maintaining export competitiveness. China now consumes more than 65 million tons of seafood each year, with seafood imports exceeding $20 billion. There's another impact that's rarely mentioned, desert fish farming helps reduce pressure on coastal fisheries. China's coastal areas are facing overfishing with some fish species declining by 70 to 80% in the past 40 years along with increasing industrial pollution. Moving aquaculture inland not only rescues the marine environment, but also creates tens of thousands of new jobs for people in Xinjiang. And above all, this is a strategic message China wants to send to the world. If we can farm fish in the desert, nothing is impossible. In most other countries, fish are usually farmed near the coast, and wastewater is often discharged directly carrying antibiotics, fish waste, and bacteria, causing severe pollution. But in Xinjiang, things are different. Here, water is so precious that not a single drop is wasted. They've designed a closed-loop recirculating system where every drop is filtered, cleaned, and reused many times. Fish waste and leftover feed are collected in sedimentation tanks, where natural microorganisms break down ammonia into less toxic substances. 
Finally, the water is reoxygenated and enriched with minerals to recreate a near seawater environment. Thanks to this, over 90% of the water is recycled back into the ponds, maintaining a closed life cycle. The nutrient-rich wastewater after filtration isn't wasted either. It's channeled to the fields and becomes irrigation for an even bolder experiment growing rice in the desert. The story of rice in Xinjiang began in 2018 when scientists decided to plant seawater rice, a variety that can tolerate much higher salinity than regular rice on salty alkaline land, once considered barren. Many thought it was just a scientific show, but the seeds still sprouted. In the Hupu experimental area where soil salinity reached 177 parts per thousand, the first rice blossoms still appeared. Year after year, thanks to reused fish pond water and soil improvement techniques, salinity dropped. The soil became looser and the rice grew stronger. Just four years later, from a few initial hectares, the rice area expanded to thousands of hectares. In 2023 alone, Xinjiang had about 2,000 hectares of seawater rice, yielding over 8 tons per hectare on par with, or even surpassing many traditional rice-growing regions. The green fields around Kashgar and Korla not only provide rice, but also transform the desert landscape, the soil is moister, wild plants start to grow again, and sandstorms become less severe. Of course, no story is entirely rosy. The fish farming project in the Taklamakan, impressive as it is, still raises big questions about ecology, society, and costs. A flash flood in Hotan once swept away over 600,000 fish, causing tens of millions of yuan in losses, showing that nature can easily upend any plan. Experts also warn if marine fish escape into the wild, they could become invasive species threatening the fragile ecosystem around Taklamakan. Freshwater is already so scarce that agriculture uses over 90% of Xinjiang's total water and now faces even more pressure, while Tian Shan glaciers are shrinking rapidly due to climate change. On top of that, every fish pond needs expensive membranes, pipes, oxygenators, and sensors, meaning the whole model can only survive with heavy state subsidies and strict management. Yet looking around the world, China isn't the only country challenging nature. Israel turned the Negev Desert into vegetable gardens with drip irrigation. Dubai turned the sea into the artificial Palm Jumeirah Islands, a symbol of Middle Eastern luxury. And now China has chosen a different path turning the Taklamakan Desert into an artificial ocean. You could say Israel turned sand into gardens, Dubai turned the sea into islands, and China turned the desert into an ocean. Each achievement is a way for humanity to prove that nature's limits can be bent with enough technology and vision. So what does the future hold for this model? Many researchers believe that if it succeeds in Taklamakan, it could be replicated in other Chinese deserts like the Gobi or Badain Jaran, and even further afield to the Middle East, where Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are eager for food security, or to North Africa, where Egypt and Morocco are battling severe desertification. China is already planning to upgrade its entire cold chain logistics, connecting seafood from deep inland to Beijing, Shanghai, and even to European markets. If successful, this ocean in the desert will not only be a scientific marvel for China, but could become a global solution to food crises and climate change. From a land once called Enter and You'll Never Get Out, Taklamakan has now become a place where millions of groupers, shrimp, and even pearls are raised. This story isn't just a Chinese miracle. It's a bold test for humanity turning the impossible into possible. And the final question is for you, the audience. Is this genius or madness? Leave your comments below, share your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more shocking stories from around the world.